What is this? It's meant what? to be sunny in Lanzarote. <laughs> well, this wasn't forecast, was it? What's going on? <laughs> this is a bit minging. Yeah, um, what are we doing this morning? Well, we're meant to be swimming. We were meant to go on a ride, actually. We were meant to go on a ride, yeah. But um, all of us looked out the window and kind of agreed that it was not a good idea. I had like, the worst night's sleep anyway, so I was kind of glad I could doze for a little, a little bit. Um, and then we're at Andy's hotel, or the hotel Andy's staying at. He doesn't own the hotel. <laughs> and, uh, there's no sign of him. There's no sign of him, yeah. He's meant to be meeting us here. I'm always the one who's late, but he's not here. And... Um, Going to be going for a little swim in the 20 meter pool, which is just there. Um, but it's a fair few people watching at breakfast. And, um, <laughs> I don't know if I fancy it. <laughs> What's that, Mate, it's horrible. Am I stagged up going on? That's a 50 meter swimming pool. It's luxury, isn't it? It's actually not bad. Well, this is a Leon Chevalier special where he uses a lot of this cord. <laughs> I think he uses it for his elastic laces as well on his um, Giro Empires. But um, he also uses it for his race belt. Essentially, like the race belts can be really annoying when they like when they're too tight and they dig in and they they're just annoying. So this is just a bit of a bodge, but it actually works really well. This elastic cord and you just tighten a little loop, which looks tiny, but obviously it's elastic, so you can step into it. Um, just do a nice tight knot there, and then use the elastic, or use the um, safety pins. Three points, so one in the middle, two on the ends, and then fingers crossed, that won't rip the, uh, the number, and it'll keep it on nice and secure. So that's what it should be like. Hopefully, I think I'm doing it right. So that'll be on the ground. I don't know if, I do need to check actually, if um, you need to wear the race belt on the bike. Sometimes with these Spanish races, um, you don't have to wear them on the bike, which is ideal. But, let's say it's on the run. Boom. You run in. Take it out. You step in. I'm gonna be careful not to rip it now. <laughs> Okay. That's it. Right. How's the swim anyway? Yeah, swim was alright. Bit of a weird pull. But <laughs> yeah, a good swim. And just spin the arms around a little bit. And now we're just uh, prepping the bags and everything. Because um, it's still wet outside, so I don't know whether a ride is actually going to happen or not. Which is kind of annoying because I did want to bed in the chain a little bit and just. Uh, Give the legs one last little spin, but I don't think it's worth it if I'm just going to make the bike really nigging and horrible um, and risk being on slippy roads. So, I'm going to pack everything up, get it ready for racking, and fingers crossed the um, the weather kind of gets better, um, so we can head out quickly before we before we rack. Yeah, talk about the chain. You put it on last thing last night, didn't you? Yes. The uh, yeah. So. Ceramic speed chain, as you can see, I've made a little bit of a mess. Um, I don't think putting these things on you can not make a mess because the ceramic speed coating is just like, it's like cocaine, it just gets everywhere. <laughs> not that I know what cocaine is like, so uh, yeah, so it's all over the wheels, it's all over the frame, but um, yeah, super, super quick chain. So that's the last sort of thing I've needed to put on. And then I just wanted to, um, yeah, spin the bike uh, a little bit brush off a little bit of that ceramic speed coating because it does get everywhere um, and sort of bed it in because from what I've heard it's like the most efficient like um, duration on the chain is like once you're up to like 30, 40 kilometers um, which to obviously yeah we'll experience tomorrow but if I can just bed it in um, a little bit today that'd be really cool. I'm 
summers already, I reckon. It's probably something I've forgotten. Got plenty of time though, because transition doesn't open until like three this afternoon, and it's like 12, so. It's dried up now, so you can um... head out for a bike ride. I need to sort this out, actually. <laughs> Take your dusty chain. I don't know how this is meant to work. Take your dusty chain out of this house and into the Lanzarotian. Lanzarotian? Lanzarotian? Lanzarotian. Oh, yeah. Something like that. I'm eating Andy in a few minutes. And I guarantee I'm going to be late again. <laughs> Surely not. <laughs> it's late this morning. Yeah. I made a change. You don't know what to do with yourself. Hey. You don't know what to do with yourself, turning up. No, no. Really? And makes stand me, there. Makes me uneasy. <laughs> <laughs> but what do I do? Yeah. Right. Little spin, few efforts. Mate, it sounded sketchy out there on that ride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nearly lost it, but um, man, yeah. that chain feels freaking quick. I just need to wipe down the Cocaine that's come off of it. Did <laughs> I <laughs> say cocaine on um, YouTube? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Actually, maybe not. I don't know. Um, <laughs> we'll it out. But yeah, it looks nice and nice and white. Um, but yeah, nearly lost it on the descent, so we may potentially change the front wheel. Uh, I know James Mitchell has got a shallower uh, section front wheel, um, and it's also a Swiss side, so it would match up. Mm. Um, these wheels are absolutely incredible and I still haven't decided whether I'm going to go shallower because these wheels do actually deal pretty well in the wind but it's looking to be like bad wind tomorrow if that makes any sense. Like it's meant to look windy for Lanzarote tomorrow so it may make more sense to get a shallow section wheel. The only issue is I can guarantee the tyre that he's got on there is not tanned and it will look weird. <laughs> <laughs> that so that's, true. that's my dilemma. So for me, that would be uh, that would be a bit annoying, wouldn't it? Yeah. Like the photos are going to look strange. I don't know. Part of me is just like, oh, man up and get on with it. But also, is it just going to give me more confidence? I, I don't know. Uh, what are we doing next time? I need lunch, mate. Lunch. All right. Let's do. Casual sponsorship. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so we've done uh, racking, we've had some dinner, it was really nice with um, Andy, Josh, and I've forgotten Ivan. his dad's name, Ivan. Ivan. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was really nice. Calzone, which went down way too quick, could have had another one. May have a few biscuits before bed. Uh, and now we're just going through the final um, prep with regards to nutrition. I've done this a million times, but it's the night before the race and I have to do it a million times again just to give myself peace of mind before I go to bed. But yeah, we'll get an early night. Whether I shave my legs again or not, I'm not too sure. They're still feeling pretty good, but maybe, maybe that'll help out. Who knows? <laughs> and we'll get ready for tomorrow. So final stages, um, I'm trying to sort of yeah, not get too nervous. With this being the first race of the season, as with everyone racing, it's gonna be a chance to just see where you're at. It's very early in the season. It's the earliest I've ever raced. So there's still gonna be plenty of opportunity. And this is almost a chance to see where I'm at and address uh, weaknesses and uh, take you know confidence from things that are, fingers crossed, going well. So um, yeah, I'm trying not to get myself too wound up, but I obviously I want all the hard work over the winter to mean something and to come into fruition. So so obviously yeah, I want all the hard work over the winter to pay off. But um, there's I'm trying not to stress too much and overwork myself about this race. It's just about going out there, putting together a race that I'm proud of and and I'm yeah I'm happy with. Um, we'll move on to the next one. Like I said, it's very early on in the season, and I'm just raring to go. So yeah. 
off to bed now, and I'll see you in the morning. Morning, I'm on it. Come on, Harry. There's only 20 up. Buddy, keep pushing. About a minute up, minute up. Go on, Harry. Let's go, Harry. Come on. Come on, Harry. Dig in now. Run. Good, Good strong run. Come on. Her home race. As we get to welcome Harry Palmer. So, Amy Howe having a fantastic and she is hoping to take her fourth title here. I got burnt. <laughs> That's what you need to know. Um, <laughs> I blame on you, your sun cream. I, I blame on the applier. Yeah, probably. More like it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I'm it's um, yeah, a few hours on from the race. Uh, got back, had a shower, and yeah, packing stuff up now, ready to leave tomorrow. Um, just thought we'd go through a little bit of a debrief of the race, really. Uh, it definitely. Yeah, interesting one. It wasn't the the result that I wanted. However, it was good to try something new, uh, but that trying something new didn't work out and it would just, I ended up blowing up and getting spat out really and having a, a poor result. And it's frustrating because I've worked so hard in training and I know I'm at a point where I'm, I'm worthy of a better result than that. Uh, and I could have got a far better result than that. However, uh, circumstances happened and I <laughs> kind of messed it up and raced like a bit of an idiot and I made it worse for myself. And so, yeah, I mean, early season race, this stuff happens, but if we go through swim, bike and run. So on the start, um, I actually settled in really nicely in the swim and I was just on the hips and the feet of Reese Barkley. Uh, so I was in a good position and I was in that kind of like front pack, or maybe like sort of seven, eight people back, maybe a bit more, sort of in the top 10, like in that sort of front pack, felt really good. It got to about 500 meters, 600 meters into the swim, and there was a big surge. I don't know who did it, probably either Andy or Josh, because they are assholes, <laughs> um, and they want me to suffer. But yeah, the pace just went up, and I, hadn't necessarily recovered completely from that initial surge that you get always at the start of the races. So I kind of went into the red trying to cover that, Did, didn't manage to cover it that well, ended up getting spat out, came out of the water about a minute down from uh, the first person getting out. So it wasn't horrendous, but I definitely wanted to be in that front pack and be present and I wasn't. So I got onto the bike in a bit of a rush and I thought it would be a good idea, or actually, no, I didn't think it would be a good idea. I was just so tunnel visioned on catching this first group um, and the front pack. The reason for that was because I knew the first out and back, so you go up a hill, come back down, and then you got a massive hill, or it's not a massive hill, but it's a huge drag into a headwind. I knew it would be very beneficial to be in that group. 
So I was so tunnel visioned, I was like, I need to catch the group, I need to catch the group, that I didn't think about the bigger picture, which is if you ride too hard for half an hour, you are going to blow up and have a really miserable day. <laughs> and if you pace yourself perhaps a little better and you work with other people perhaps that are behind you, maybe you could have had a more successful day. I didn't think about that. So I rode past, yeah, Tom Davis, uh, Reese. Uh, I rode past Andy, who wasn't necessarily feeling all that good. Um, and I got to the turnaround point uh, and I was catching up this front pack. So that was keeping me motivated. So I was working really hard. I think my normalized power was about 365. And my stages power meter reads about 15 watts too low. So it was about 380, 375, 380 watts for the first like 20 minutes or so, um, which I can tell you now is not a good idea in hindsight. Uh, but I was, like I said, I was so tunnel vision. I got to that turnaround point. I was so close to them. I then flipped through the gears too much. Um, when I was on the descent, I dropped my chain. That was annoying. Uh, so then once I got that back on, um, and I was trying to put in pace again, that group was completely gone. So I'd not only spent loads of matches and burnt loads of matches trying to catch them, but I was unsuccessful catching them. So I was then in no man's land, going up this huge drag into a headwind, having absolutely mullered myself. <laughs> um, if I had caught them, would it be a different story? Uh, probably, but I was still having to work very hard. So, it's difficult to say. I mean, yeah, these things happen. I ended up um, continuing with the race and just like the power just slowly dropped off. It just felt worse and worse and worse. Came off the bike in maybe 12th. So I worked my way up to like seventh on the bike and then just slowly got worse. As people started coming through, I just had nothing in the tank. I just felt horrendous. Uh, yeah, got off the bike in 12th and was like, you know what? If my run legs come good, this would be great and I can get into the top 10 and maybe push on a little bit further. Um, and if I fuel appropriately, then this could be a good race. Uh, I learned very quickly that uh, in the first few K that was not gonna happen. And essentially the whole run was like survival mode because I'd put in such a big amount of effort on the bike, the, the run was just like, it was just plodding along. Um, and I tried so hard to run even just a little bit quicker and I just felt like I was sprinting and I was just gassing myself um, and people would come through and normally I'd be able to sit on their hips or sit on their shoulder and work at their pace um, but I had nothing in the tank here it was absolutely horrendous uh, I was not looking good I appreciate all the support from people out there um, but wow that was yeah I mean I'm just glad I got to the finish but I did get to finish in 15th which is not the result that I wanted, um, like I said, but it's all learning. It's all, you know, you gotta try these things, you gotta try them and see if they work. Uh, that definitely did not. <laughs> and it's the first race of the season. This is like months ahead of when I have raced in the past. So I've still got loads of time, which is great, but it's just frustrating that I didn't get the result that I feel like I'm, I, I'm capable of, but that will come. That's not a problem. Uh, I think if I'd, got out in the front pack of the swim. This is why I'm so conscious about my swimming and making sure that I get out in these front packs. This swim, however, was very unusual. Well, not, not very unusual, but it was unusual in the fact that there were multiple uh, ITU guys, um, people like Josh, people like Andy. They were like, it, that front pack was like eight people of really, really strong swimmers. Like Andy and Josh didn't come out at, at the front that tells you how good these swimmers were. And so if it was like a, an average sort of race, an average uh, start list, then I probably would have come out of the front and then I wouldn't have had to do a massive surge on the bike. And then I probably would have been more present on the bike and more present on the run. But yeah, obviously there's if, buts and what's, but um, that's, that's what happened today. And that's kind of my reasoning behind the decisions that I made um, and <laughs> probably not the best decision making at all. However, would I have also got a better position if I'd eased off on the bike and let people go um, and race my own race? I would argue maybe not, like maybe I would have felt a bit better, but I probably wouldn't have got a better position because those guys on the bike were absolutely flying. I mean, just to, just to as a bit of an example of how strong these guys are, Daniel Backergaard, got spat out on the bike. 
that's like he's one of the best athletes in the world and he got spat on the bike so yeah these guys are absolutely phenomenal it was an absolutely stacked field so to come in the top 15 is good it's just not where i want to be um so work to be done but plenty more opportunities this season and i'm really looking forward to it so i hope you guys have enjoyed these videos that we've been doing um, ahead of race day and this race day video itself. There will be plenty more of these coming up this season and fingers crossed I can get some better, better results under my belt. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Now, have you seen your racing cap? It's bad, isn't it? That's why I put a long sleeve on as well because the lines here are oh, horrendous. No. Is it, does it show up really badly? Um, I mean, it might do when I- Hi guys. When I, I color grade <laughs> it, it might be. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs>